different sort of stuff that you might be used to. So just be aware of that. Uh, and if you have any questions or concerns, of course, just email me uh, or you can come talk to me. Um, so. I guess I took that off. So that's okay. So, okay. So we are meeting here for the 15th uh, and Thursdays and Tuesdays. And uh, like I said, the, uh, I don't have specific office hours, but since it's a small enough class, just email me. I'm relatively easy to get access to by email. I'll respond right away. Um, there are no, there's no textbook. I'll provide all the class notes, much of the reading material, and all online resources we need to write it, and that's the website. So let's, um, before we go on, I want to go through the schedule. Okay, tentative schedule, so we, then that will give you an idea of what we are going to cover in this class. Um, uh, actually, before that, let's just jump right in. What, what are we trying to do in this? In this class, uh, my, my research is in optics. We do optical engineering. In this class, I want to apply optics, which is basically the science and engineering of light, to the problem of energy. And that could mean generation of energy. It could be... Uh, uh, some way of transportation of energy, or it could be utilization of energy, it could even be recycling of material. So it can be a very broad, and we'll talk uh, a little, uh, small aspects of each of these different things, okay? Uh, but, so our objectives in this class are fairly straightforward. Very, I want it to be very clear, uh, hopefully at the end of the semester you would have achieved it, is first we want to have some basic knowledge about optical design and engineering. Okay, how do we design optical systems? Fairly simple systems, you can just uh, purchase it um, for 5000 or 6000 by the class. Uh, and the second thing, which is even more important, in my opinion, is to apply this knowledge to innovate. In other words, create some new ideas. First of all, of course, we have to identify some problems, and then create some new ideas with our knowledge about optics to solve those problems. Okay, and this is exercise is the important uh, outcome of this class, I'm hoping. Uh, hopefully, the solutions that are practical, high impact, we can apply to this. And then, of course, we'll also talk about some new things that are happening in the field, so we understand uh, new technologies that are coming in the horizon. So these are my three goals for you for this class. Okay. Um, the topics that we will cover. So we will cover uh, many things in this class, but uh, technically speaking, we are going to deal with four different one is optical design, uh, and what does that mean? That means, you know, how do you design a lens? Uh, well, that might be a little bit uh, uh, simplistic, but let's say, uh, how do you design the lens for a camera, say? Or how do you design a microscope? Of course, these have not, not much to do with energy. What, what does this have to do with energy? How would you design a solar concentrator? Okay, and we'll talk about a few simple examples in this uh, lecture today. Well, of course, relate this to thermodynamics because everything to do with energy, we need to understand some basic uh, principles of thermodynamics because it's not just the light, it's how you utilize the light, how you absorb it and things like that. By the way, all, this note's uh, posted online, so you can just look at it. Okay. So we'll look at thermodynamics of solar thermal and photovoltaic devices. We'll focus on solar thermal and photovoltaic because, of course, thermodynamics is a huge field in itself. So we want to understand a little part of it so we can utilize it for our purposes. That's what we will do. Um, we will also look at some very interesting novel approaches to light management in photovoltaic devices. What does that mean? That means could, uh, we have a solar panel. Could we do something to the solar panel or to the light before it reaches the solar panel such that we can extract more energy out of it? Okay, we'll talk about some interesting ways to do it. And hopefully, you you will come up with some ideas. And then we'll look at some uh, interesting emerging areas of energy, which is kind of broad because there are lots of things happening, and we'll talk about this uh, during the class. So this is kind of roughly uh, the four technical areas that we'll, we'll, we'll think about. Then, uh, so grading, so uh, important for all of us. It, uh, by the way, I'm, I'm not particularly uh, Grading is not the most important thing for me. The most important thing for me is we get something out of this class. Uh, and and I, I will explain very clearly what I mean by that something. And what I mean by that something is the experience or the insight 
that you can use uh, of this journey from technical knowledge to creating an innovation or an entrepreneurial, uh, you know, starting of an entrepreneurial journey. That experience is usually lacking in an engineering class, and I'm hoping that you'll get that out of it. This is my main objective from this class, and it's a fun class when they look at it that way. But of course, grades are important uh, from the perspective of the university. So this is uh, very specific again. So we have uh, grading based on two things. One is a midterm exam, which is scheduled currently for October 4th in the class. That's about 20% of the grade. Okay. Uh, and then there are team-based projects. What, what does that mean? That means we'll divide the class into small groups, uh, possibly three, maybe two, depending upon how many students there are. And then uh, each uh, group or each team will address a certain problem and try to solve that problem. And it could be something that you come up with, uh, and preferably so, rather than me giving it to you, but of course I can work with it. We'll talk more about it later on. So, 15 so there are four team presentations, and the first one is on September 13th, we'll go through the schedule. Uh, and there are 15% 15 of the grade for each of the presentations, so it's a little over 50%. Uh, and uh, the final thing is a team business plan and canvas. We'll talk about what a canvas means later on. That's a specific approach to a, a entrepreneurship, how do you address innovation and how do you actually make deal on a, on, on a, on a business plan. That's not so important at the moment. Uh, and there are some very specific things that go into what I call a business plan. Um, and we will actually get help from the Technology and Venture Commercialization Office here, so there will be guest lectures and so on. So the idea here is to really bring in some resources around the university to uh, that you actually have access to. So we have a very, uh, hopefully, a rich learning experience here. And that's due on December 7th, the actual uh, uh, report. It's actually a few, two or three page report. OK. So any questions so far? I guess we can turn on the light before I move on. No? It's OK? It's very clear. I, I, we'll go into the details soon. Okay, good. So let's go through the tentative schedule because I want you to get a very good picture of what we are going to do in the class. Okay. Um, so the website's there, I'll show you shortly, but keep in mind that many of the lectures will be conducted online, so please watch the schedule. The class website, which I will show you, will have the most up-to-date announcements, so check there first if there are any <coughs> last-minute changes. I'll also probably send out an email if something is very important, like we this cancel a class, or it's, which usually shouldn't happen, but in, in case. Uh, and like I said, I will mirror them on Canvas, but if you absolutely don't have a chance to only check one, check my website. So let's go over there. Yeah, which, let's see. No, oh, that's Canvas. So, okay, so let's log in. Courses, so it's the first menu item. And all the details are here as well, so you can read through it. No. <coughs> okay, so we are here. Uh, okay, for the year of the course, we'll talk about some solar cooker basics for the next class. Um, Thursday, we'll talk more about projects, and the reason I want to do this early on is I want to go through some of the examples that we have typically done in the previous years and some give you some ideas to start thinking about what you want to work during the semester. This class is a highly project-based class in the sense that you have to drive this yourself quite a bit. I mean, of course, you will get some of the basic prin uh, technical principles here, but really the innovation and really the driving force has to be on your end and from, from a team perspective. And again, the goal, uh, my goal really here is this is what you will be expected to do when you go out and work at a company, startup, or whatever. Right? So I want you to get that experience from that. Um, next week, uh, we'll have uh, some starting uh, lectures on solar radiation, some basic understanding of thermodynamics of sunlight, and some basic thermodynamics. Of course, I will also put lots of links with resources, so you can click on it, and there's a lot more material there, and I'll probably add more things to it. Um, and, and these will be remote classes. What that means is that I probably won't be here, uh, because I'll be out of town, and uh, the TA, Akhafim, will be here. He will set up a, a, a video conference system, 
that you can of course you can ask questions uh, you can still interact and just be here but just be aware of that because some students may not be happy about it but just giving you up front uh, we will assign the project teams and, and topics by next Thursday so you have a couple of weeks to prepare for the first assignment Okay, so if you're planning to drop the class, please let me know as soon as possible so we have to reshuffle your students. So, so just be aware of that. Um, and of course, if you have any questions, again, in terms of topics, if you have certain things that you're very passionate about, you're very excited about, you know, feel free to let me know. Or if you have someone that you really want to work with, let me know as well. Otherwise, I'll try to balance out what I think are the different, you know, to complement me, I'll try to match it with someone from the CD and things diversity of, of uh, backgrounds, um, technical backgrounds. Then, uh, then we'll uh, have, in the, the first week of September, we'll talk about ge geometrical optics. So optics, uh, optical design uh, can be, there are many different fa families of them. We'll talk about two different families in this one. One is called geometrical optics, which as you can imagine, geometrical optics refers to uh, where you can draw rays. So you will basically take the ruler and draw rays and try to understand okay, how, how, how lenses work, how mirrors work, and uh, And uh, then there's something called non-imaging optics or non-geometric optics, which has to do with transportation of energy. And that's a, it's a very, very interesting but very different type of design. And we'll talk about that later on as you go through. Okay, first, because we need to understand geometrical optics in order to understand non geometrical optics. So that's where we have to start. And this is very basic stuff. You might, some of you might have seen this before, but it will be very good to see. Uh, I suspect most of you haven't because there are not too many undergraduate optics classes uh, here anymore. Okay, so, um, so uh, that we'll have two lectures on that because it's a pretty involved uh, topic, and we'll certainly have questions on this in our midterm. So just be aware of that. Um, then, uh, the following week, we will ha start non-imaging optics or the non-geometrical optics. So after understanding geometrical optics, we'll start thinking about non-geometrical optics. And I'll, um, and your first assignment is September 13th. So you have a couple of weeks after your project uh, team's assignment. Actually, it's only one and a half weeks. So just be aware of that. And I'll give you very specific instructions on what each assignment is. Each assignment, I will talk about it in more detail is really a presentation. So it will be, you will be giving a presentation in class as a team, which will be roughly 10, maybe 15 minutes, and, and then there will be some Q&A. You'll all ask questions, you can ask questions. So you need to feel free to answer a few percent. Okay, again, this is important because this will allow us to slowly make progress during the semester towards the eventual goal of creating a renovation and creating a commercialization plan around renovation. So this is the goal. Then, uh, next uh, part of September, we'll finish non imaging optics. We'll talk about radiometry, photometry, which has to do with how you understand uh, energy from the, from the perspective of light, sunlight specifically. We'll talk, and there's some very interesting implications that we'll talk about those. Um, uh, after that, we'll talk about ray tracing. So, optical ray tracing uh, software is a so in today, no one does uh, optical design by hand, just because it's too complicated right now. You have, could you could have tens of lenses. There's no way you can do it by hand. I mean, you can, but it will take forever. So almost everything is done by computer, which means that we need to also understand the numerical tools that exist and be able to use them. So we'll have a tutorial eventually on how you can use ray tracing in the console, and I will post. Uh, instructions and, uh, on how you can get access to it. And it's totally free. You already have access to it at the university uh, through what's called the Cade Lab, which I assume most of you already know. Um, we'll give you very clear instructions. So we basically have one lecture, basically a tutorial on how to use it. My goal here is that you would have learned some of the basic theoretical principles in the last previous two weeks. You're going to use those principles to now start investigating numerically actual systems. Start with simple systems, of course, you know, simple solar panels, whatever. But then hopefully you can utilize those skills to essentially model whatever innovation you come up with as part of your project. Okay, so I would expect each team 
be able to utilize these models to actually uh, do some simulations, probably towards the third assignment. I will come to that. So that will be towards the second half of the semester. Just be aware of what I expect on the assignments as well. Uh, and then we will have a midterm review. So basically, we'll go through all the topics that are important for the midterm. And uh, we'll still class on September 2nd. That might change depending upon you know, how we are progressing in terms of time. But just uh, be aware of that for now. Um, uh, and then we have midterm right before the fall break. Okay. So far, okay. Any questions? No? Okay. Good. Um, Again, I wanted to be up as clear and upfront as possible, so ask me if something is not clear now. Uh, then after fall break, we'll go into a somewhat different type of optical design called statistical gray optics. This turns out to be very, very, it's a, it's, a, it's a theory, so it's a basic understanding of something, but this basic understanding turns out to be very, very important for improving the <coughs> performance of solar shots, okay, which is practically used today. So every solar panel that we buy today, utilizes some basic understanding of something called statistical gray optics. So it looks a little bit uh, esoteric, but it actually turns out to be very important. And we'll talk about that. Uh, of course, this class is not highly mathematical, uh, as maybe you can guess. But uh, the more, and again, I don't really particularly care too much about the mathematical, so although optical engineering highly can be highly mathematical, the most important thing I want to gain here is intuition. So you want to have a feeling for how things work. So um, uh, the back of the envelope calculation is a fine. So for instance, in the in the, in the midterm, if you're not able to get the final answer, it's okay as long as you show the depth and how you get it. I don't particularly care if you get the final answer right away. Of course, it'd be good if you get that. It's less important in my opinion. It's more important to get the intuition. Again, I want you to understand what, what I expect from that. Okay, uh, and then October 18, we have the assignment two. This is basically, and we'll go into a little more detail about this game, but this will be a presentation of your innovation. So what that means is that in those previous uh, three or four weeks, you would have met as a team to identify a problem, okay? Either I have assigned to you or you have picked, right? So the first assignment, you would have done kind of a literature search to understand the landscape a little bit better. And the ensuing uh, few weeks, you would have worked together to kind of solve that problem, or come up with crazy ideas to solve that problem. And then I will give you a little bit more detail, but the idea in this presentation is to present your top two or three ideas with some uh, explanation of why you picked it. Okay, I will go into a little more detail. So you can see we're slowly making progress. We're going to slowly build on the foundation. Okay, at least that's the goal. So, so let's hope I, I have. Okay. Um, this class doesn't tax you too much, but I expect you to do a quite a bit of work on your own. So just be aware of that. Okay. Uh, and I'm very flexible. So if you have some, you know, if you cannot make a class or whatever, it's fine because we, as I said, we have a four days of presentation. So I'm relatively flexible. You know, of course, always need your help. Okay, uh, then we'll go into an interesting topic called optical design for recycling. This is a very interesting area, uh, multi-billion dollar industry, which no one thinks about. It's recycling of materials. How do you recycle plastics, aluminum, metal, whatever it is. It's a huge industry. And optics turns out to have a huge role in how you separate materials. So we'll talk about that. Uh, and I can give you an example of one of the uh, maybe three or four years ago, one of the groups actually used that as their project topic. They actually innovated on a optics-based recycling system. Uh, you can put a bottle in, it, ha it had some machine using kind of solution which it sold in the plastic to a number of people. And they built a little prototype. So it's pretty interesting. That's a simple example. Um, so, so uh, like I said, this class is not only technical. So in, the, in that example, they also had to prove why was that a better solution? Like how would they make money providing that solution? We also need both sides of the spectrum. So just be aware, as engineers, we need to be able to justify what we're doing. 
Uh, uh, we'll talk about anti-reflection coatings, very, very important part of solar panels and, and many other things. Uh, we'll uh, spend a lecture on uh, measurement techniques. So measurement in photovoltaics can turn out to be fairly complicated, how you actually measure efficiency of a panel is not a simple thing. So we'll talk a little bit about the protocols and medical standards and things like that, just so we are aware of this. Uh, this is something you should be aware of. Uh, we'll talk, and then we'll jump into some interesting new technology. So this spectrum splitting is a completely new idea that, well, somewhat old, but lots of new things are coming out of it. Uh, some research in my lab, for instance, so we'll, we'll talk about that. So it's some pretty interesting stuff. Uh, we'll also do a review of solar cells. By, by review, what I mean is, uh, in this class, we're not gonna, this is not a semiconductor physics class, right? So we don't go into the semiconductor physics of how solar panels work, solar cells work. Although many of you in ETE probably already have taken 3200 or something. I, I used to teach 3200, so we talked about scale values and things like that. So, but many of you may not be from ETE, so we want to have kind of a review of this. So we'll talk a little bit about uh, the basic uh, concepts in solar cells. And this is important because we, when you, whenever you start trying to innovate, say, improvements in solar cells, you also want to understand what happens after the light is absorbed. Right? You want to be aware of both things. Not just what happens outside, but you want to have what happens inside. And it will become obvious when we talk about spectrum splitting, for instance. Um, then, November 8th, we will have a lec uh, lecture on technology commercialization. This will be a guest lecture from the TDC, which is the Technology and Venture Commercialization Office at the University of Utah, which, uh, if you're not aware of it, this is a fantastic resource that's available to all of us, probably. Um, uh, so, we'll have that. And we will also have some mentors from the TDC assigned to each team. And they're going to give you some guidance as you build your commercialization plan. So you can see starting November, we are starting to think more about the entrepreneurial commercialization side. So we've kind of finished most of the basic principles by then. And you're starting to get uh, more familiar with you using the console vacation software, hopefully, by then. Okay, now you're starting to put your hat on as an entrepreneur. Okay. I don't want to separate it, but this is where we will start thinking along those lines. So number 13, we'll think about uh, business model canvas. Like I said, it's a methodology which allows one to think about how to execute on an innovation, how to implement a business plan. Very, very interesting, very useful uh, skill to actually learn. So you can see, starting here, Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention some of these are remote lectures, so just be aware of them. Here, uh, some of these places I, meet, uh, I mentioned teams meet with commercialization mentors this week. Uh, I will reiterate this, but the point is that I will, uh, we will be assigning one mentor, or maybe two mentors, to each team, which means that you have the opportunity to, and uh, they're also the TDC, they are all experts in, in entrepreneurship and commercialization, you will have the opportunity to meet with them. Uh, as much as you want, but at least once a week when I say. So it's really only two times you can meet with them at the minimum. But the idea there is to talk to them and get some feedback from them on your ideas, on your proposal, on your plan, presentations, and so on. So really, really useful. So take advantage of this. Then, perhaps the most interesting assignment, in my opinion, is assignment, sorry, assignment three which is, I called it a build-out analysis presentation. Now, we'll talk more about it, but generally speaking, it's either a prototype, you can hack something together, and some students do that, or you can simulate something, and or you can do a theoretical analysis, whatever you want, it's up to you. But the goal here is to show credibility to your innovation, right? You want to build the foundation, so previously I presented the innovation, and, uh, and uh, weeks after that, you're gonna slowly build up credibility, okay? Okay, you're gonna show, either it works or it doesn't work, it's okay. Negative results are also okay. You have to prove it as, as, as rigorously as possible, of course. I don't expect you to do a full-blown, uh, there's not enough time, obviously, to make something, right? But and it could even be just a cardboard model, right? So I, I, you, if you, um, Go to the previous class websites, you can see some examples from previous years. And most students, it turned out to be pretty creative and very, very interesting. That's why I said that's kind of my favorite assignment. Uh, November 20th, uh, uh, it's the week of Thanksgiving, so we'll 
probably again we have no class, but again this might change if you're aware of it in terms of schedule, but for now that's, that's the schedule. I won't change the midterm, so so for now that's fixed, that's always the schedule. Make sure you're planning to go on vacation or something, that's okay. If you are planning to go on vacation or something, let me know, that's okay. Uh, then it's Thanksgiving. So, and following that, we'll start talking about light trapping. So, uh, again, light trapping is a very important application in solar uh, energy where you can essentially, when light enters a solar cell, you want to make sure it spends as much time as possible within the what's called the active region of the solar cell so it can get absorbed and converted into electricity. There's a very high likelihood that much of this light can just get reflected out or get converted to heat or something which is useless for from an electric perspective. Okay, so light trapping turns out to be extremely important. Theoretically, by the way, this is the uh, practical implementation of the statistical way of which we learned a few weeks ago. Okay. So you will hopefully tie it. Uh, I'll tie it, but so you will see where this comes in. We will understand some of the theory and some mechanics, and hopefully more practical. So I will. Guest, uh, guest lecture by James, who, who whose research has actually been proved by traffic. So, so we'll get some really, really uh, uh, state-of-the-art information. Um, we'll also talk about light extraction for LEDs for two reasons. First, light trapping and light, so light trapping is how light enters the solar cell, how you keep it there, okay? how you prevent it from escaping or discharging. Light extraction is the opposite, right? You have an LED. How do you make sure all the light comes out as efficiently as possible? Okay. But it turns out that from a thermodynamic point of view, these are actually poorly done. In fact, there's a very, very interesting paper that came out about two years ago where the title of the paper is An Efficient Solar Cell is Also an Efficient LED. So, and this was not appreciated until maybe very recently. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. And it's useful to think from those terms. That's one reason. The second reason, of course, is that LEDs play a big role in the energy efficiency revolution. LEDs are, of course, much more efficient than any of these lights. So we will really want to understand that. And it could be part of one of your projects could be to improve LEDs. So that could be a, an interesting problem. If you're aware of. So that's why we will deal with that. Then we have what are called luminescent concentrators, which is again kind of a niche area, but very interesting and novel area because it allows one to integrate solar cells into architecture. Bus, so uh, we see some examples where there's a bus stop in, uh, I forget, maybe it's in Germany, where it's covered in solar cells, but it's based on a luminescent technology and looks really pretty, looks aesthetically very pretty. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then, and that's the last week of class, we'll have the final assignments. So the assignment four is basically a presentation of your business plan and commercialization plan. So basically, uh, you will have a final report I'll come to, but this is the presentation, and I'll give you exact, really clear uh, requirements of what I expect. There's, this is not like, a, since we are all engineers, I know everyone likes precise inspections. I'll try to give them as precise as possible. I don't like, a, Kind of vague stuff either. Um, it may sound like you do. So that that's the final assignment. So that's that is that. Now we have this final report. Uh, sorry, that's the final presentation. But we also have the final what I call the final report or final assignment. Is a business canvas and a business plan. And the canvas is something you will realize later on what I mean by that. We'll look into it in detail. The business plan is basically, I think it's a three-page report. It's a fairly short. And it's basically the same as what you presented here, but in your report. Shorter the better, so if you want to do two pages, do them both. So it's the same. Okay? Now, one thing I should mention is that I have this uh, couple of links here, and I'll talk more about it. Something called a Clean Tech Open. This is a, um, an organization, national organization, which organizes business plan competitions based purely on clean tech or energy technologies. So they have some guidelines on how to do business plans. And I would highly encourage you, uh, some of you, if you are excited about it enough, or if, you're, if, you're, if, you, if you have enough excitement about it, to, to submit to it. And one of the teams in Utah actually won the national competition maybe five years ago. Like Nabilan, I think it's called. There's a startup which is based here. Okay, so 
Any questions about the schedule? And so, so uh, again, I want you to have the big picture of what I expect. That's why I want to be, I'm trying to be very explicit, like the logic of why we are doing a certain thing. So, so it's not like random, right? Okay, all right. Um, okay, so let's go back. So one of the reasons uh, I really uh, like entrepreneurship and commercialization is because I started several companies and I have gone through this experience myself, and I'm always learning, so I, so I don't uh, claim to be an expert. But it's the experience that matters because that's where you gain the intuition. You actually have to do it. It's not like I can just teach you. That's why these team projects are extremely important. You do need to spend some time. It doesn't need to be many, many hours. It can be fairly short. Be very efficient about your time. Okay. And a lot of the team collaborations can also be remote. So, you know, Canvas will assign some. Uh, I haven't used this before, but Canvas has this capability where you can have discussion forums. So you don't actually need to do it yourself. You can actually meet on Canvas as well as Teams. So, everyone has access to Canvas, right? I assume. Okay, good. So, uh, let's talk a little bit more about the projects. Oh, I'm going a little too slow. So, uh, most importantly, I will assign the teams by next week, September 5th or so. So, please let me know if you don't plan to take your class. We'll, uh, we'll talk a little bit about project topics this week. The deliverables, uh, I'll talk a little more about it today. Uh, presentations with them. So, so, it's just the outline. So, first topics. So generally speaking, topic can have anything to do, like I said, I'm completely flexible. Anything to do with light and energy. Okay, I have some things that I am interested in, but that doesn't mean anything. So if you are excited about something, just tell me. And you're more than welcome to convince another person to do it with you. Okay, I'm very flexible from that point. In fact, the more it comes from you, of course, it's more interesting, right? You can be a little bit more excited about that. I don't really want to start. The things I'm interested in are simple things, right? I, I, I like sim simple things because uh, simple things can make a huge impact in the world. So I'm also interested, in, I'm from India originally, so I'm very interested in the idea of how technology can impact developing world. So cost is important, reliability is important, you know, weather issues and things like that. So I come from that perspective. That doesn't mean, and it, I mean, it can also be the same thing if you're a hiker. You're an avid outdoorsman, you could have similar sort of requirements. Right? So just be aware of that. So generally speaking, you know, solar cookers, you know, we'll talk a little bit more about that today. Solar water pasteurization, these are just examples I'm throwing out. Solar uh, water desalination, of course, in my opinion, this is probably going to be the only way we will be able to live in places like here. So <laughs> something we we'll start to have to think about very, very carefully. Uh, solar refrigeration is, of course, a very interesting, very exciting area. Uh, I used to do a lecture on that, but it uh, turned out to be a little more complicated. We don't have enough time, so I won't go into it. But if anyone's interested, that's a very challenging, but very, very rewarding area to explore. In fact, I had a uh, student team work on that a couple of years ago, and they actually built a very, very simple solar refrigeration system in the field in some of the previous classes. Websites and they showed that they could actually go a little bit beyond below the ambient. So that's really interesting, really cool. I was very excited about that. Uh, daylighting. Daylighting is a very exciting, uh, interesting area because it's, it's part of architecture. Right? So the question is, okay, now we are using all this light, but there is sunlight outside. Enough and limit. So we somehow pipe that in here and utilize it. Right? A third of electricity used in the US is lighting. It's actually lighting and heating, so <laughs> maybe it's heating as well, but let's say like, yeah, maybe half of that, so. so it can make a huge impact. And it's an interesting commercial opportunity, right? There's a very simple way or cheap way to do it, very reliable way to do it. Lots of potential for innovation, I would say. Uh, solar water heating is obviously very uh, popular. Uh, in the US, not so much yet, but it's coming. Uh, but if you go to China, you go to Germany, and so on, it's all over the place. So. Maybe we'll start with um, photo, photovoltaics, obviously. We'll talk a little more about it, but photovoltaics concentrated sort of, you know, how can you improve concentrated photovoltaics? Right? Can you build new kinds of concentrated? 
Uh, in fact, uh, we had a student team a couple of years ago where they designed a very interesting type of shape of the content data which they optimized using the ray tracing software and so on. And they built it. They just built it with, um, I forget whether it was cardboard or styrofoam, but then they covered it with some thick plastic or mylar or uh, aluminum foil or something just to show proof of work. But the other thing to keep in mind is that all of you also have access to fancy 3D printers at the Lasalle Studio for free. You don't have to pay for it. For the library also, but that you have to pay. So you can print optics, right? Now, printing optics is a very interesting uh, um, topic in itself, and I won't say much about it, except that printing transmissive optics is extremely difficult. There's probably only one company in the world that can do that today, and it's a technology that's rapidly developing. But tr printing reflective optics is straightforward, right? You just need a shape, and then you cover it with something reflective, like a paint or whatever, right? Just like that. So there are lots and lots of opportunities. And others, whatever you propose. So the things I would think about from if I were in your shoes is kind of cost, obviously, right? You want to commercialize this. You want to make sure that the cost is something the market will bear. And we'll talk more about it towards the second half of the talk. Durability, for obvious reasons. Uh, storage, you know, for instance, if you are a hiker and you want to have a solar cooker, you want to be able to hold it and somehow carry it around if I feel like it. Right? Um, uh, some cultural factors, we'll talk more about it later on. Uh, ease of use, obviously, and climate conditions. You know, things might last a long time in a dry climate versus a humid climate and things like that. Right? So you need to be aware of that. And that can affect optics, right? Because if you have condensation inside your optical system in a humid climate and it doesn't work, then you're basically losing a customer. Right? So we all, we all, we need to be aware of uh, as, an, as an engineer, we need to be aware of uh, lots of things, not just technical part. That's, that's kind of one important lesson I want you to get from this, right? Okay, so we talked a little more about the presentations. Uh, there will be four project presentations, 15% uh, each. For the online students, I, I think, at least for the video, uh, it will be 20%. Right? So the key things are, first one will be literature review. What does that mean? We will, you will pick a topic or I will give you a topic. You're going to understand what is the state of the art today, which is basically do online search, literature review, whatever. Understand the pros, cons, comparisons, overview of existing technology. And the most important thing you want to get out of this, are there any significant problems that you can address? So that's what I want you to uh, extract from this exercise, and that is due September 13th. This is not a report, just a presentation. You can email me about it. So as simple as that, 10, 15 minutes. Depends on the number of teams, so because we don't have enough time, so we have to kind of be cognizant of that. Second uh, presentation will be on innovation. So you would have identified some problems here, you're gonna to try to solve them. So here is your opportunity to make mistakes, right? You can go crazy. If you, if you go, if you have crazy ideas, don't worry about so much about cost, durability, all that stuff. Just brainstorm. And this is a brainstorming, first you will do a brainstorming exercise, I'll explain that later on. And then you're gonna to try to, you know, as, a, as your team, and then you're gonna to try to take the top two or three ideas that bubble up to the top from that analysis, from that exercise, okay? So, um, uh, yeah, take risks, yeah. so that's your October 18th. Of course, you have to be cognizant of the laws of physics. That's the only thing that I would think about, uh, I would constrain you there. Number three is uh, some more technical details of your idea. I called it the build out in terms of demo or simulations or some uh, mathematical analysis or whatever, but some way to build credibility to the innovation that you're bringing to the table, your team is bringing to the world, right? It's something new that did not exist before, you're going to create it. But before you create it, you have to convince yourself and others that this has a good chance of working. And that's the hope. Now I'm back to two. And the final assignment is a business plan and financial statement, which we will talk more about that December 6th. Okay, so the business plan, in, uh, so many examples here at cleantechopen.org, and I have a link to it, so you can look at it. Also at the U, there's a Lasan Center, uh, something called Get Seated. I think they call it something different, but the link is there. You can go read through it. They have lots of resources. Lasan Center also has the, uh, I think, um, 
a monthly or bi-monthly business plan competition. Feel free to go to it. It's a great resource to network and meet, you know, entrepreneurs. If you're if you're really interested in you know starting up, you know, even just understanding the ecosystem of entrepreneurs in in Kuwait is it's a great place to go just to meet uh, other young people like yourself. Uh, check website. Uh, you can check their website for the schedule. That you know, I'm not mandating any of this, so it's just an extra thing if you want to do. Uh, for our class, of course, it's due December seventh, as I said, and the submission is is a report, okay, and and the presentation. The presentation is just a PowerPoint that then you have to convert into a report. So this is what the report. I will we will go through this again, but just be aware the report is, is basically a two page summary. So it's two pages, not three. So I was wrong. It has all these topics, which we will talk about what they are. Basically, a description of the opportunity, description of what's going on, go to market strategy, market and industry analysis, some technical product description, which I kind of highlighted because that's the part I'm most interested in. We are still in mail time for all, so we want to be able to technically describe it, uh, do some simulations and analysis to uh, give some credibility behind it. Uh, we should talk about risks, both technical and commercial risks, some economics, basically simple financial. and. So if you are a, if you're presenting to a venture capitalist or an investor or something, this is what they would like, at the minimum what they would expect, right? So I want you to kind of go through that exercise. Uh, in addition, I also want you to create a very short, as short is shorter the better, okay? Not more than five minutes. Typically they're like five, a minute to video pitch. Uh, here's where you explain and uh, your technology. And you can see many examples of this in the previous class websites. I'll show you one in short. Uh, again, you can be creative, it can be product demo, analytics, slide presentation, whatever. And if you have anything to talk about IP, so you come up with a brand new idea, just talk about it, okay? And during the lecture on commercialization, you will learn exactly how you apply for patent. Okay, it's not that hard. I've done it many times, but you know, I did this when I was still in, uh, in the same, I wrote my first patent when I was in grad school also, just like you guys. Well, I know some of you are undergrad. So it's not that difficult. So and, and in Utah, it's much better than any other place. I went to MIT. I can tell you, the GDC at Utah is orders of magnitude more supportive than what I ever had at MIT. So writing patents, understanding how to write patents, understanding what's valuable, all this stuff is um, something I hope you will get an ex uh, experience of. You're not going to learn it right away, but just experience it and then try it. The lecture will be recorded, so you can always see it later. And everything is online. Uh, and then we'll do what's called a business canvas, which you don't need to know what it is right now, but again, like I said before, it's a methodology to understand innovation and how to go about creating a business plan. This exercise will really help you create all this. It'll come naturally. Okay? And it's actually a, an exercise that you're going to do with your team and with your commercialization manager. It's not, it's not something I'm going to give to you. Something you will do, and I'll be there all. It's really driven by you. Uh, like I said, this team will be assigned a commercialization mentor. You'll be expected to meet with your mentor. Uh, this is outside the class schedule, so you have to kind of coordinate. I, I can help, of course, but it's not during the class because we don't have time. You have to coordinate separately. I would say I expect you to meet twice in the schedule, like you saw, and just one hour, so roughly two hours a month. It's really for you to take advantage of the opportunity and the expertise that they have. Okay, so take, really take advantage of it. And, and they open up great networks. I can give you a good example. One of the students who took this class a few years ago uh, interacted with uh, his mentor for a bit and ended up actually working at the GDC. Um, I think he started as an intern, but then I think he transitioned into a full time job. And it's a fantastic place because they actually evaluate all the new technologies coming out of the U. And they need expertise like yours, you know, whatever technical expertise you have that, that you're graduating in. So it's a, it's a great opportunity. I'm also, uh, something I'm trying to do this uh, year that's new is I'm going to try to get some local uh, business leaders to come in and talk briefly as well. I'm talking to one of the key uh, 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 information, uh, in one of the information officers, chief information officer, someone from Adobe. And he has a lot of expertise, and he actually uh, does lectures at the business school, so I'm trying to get him to come in and talk to us as well. 
So you can get a, not just an idea of just optics and energy, but also kind of a general idea of what's happening in, in Salt Lake as well. For those of you who came in uh, just now, this class is very different. <laughs> You're aware of it. And I, I mean, we can talk about it at the end of the class. It's, uh, um, oh, yeah. For the mentors, again, uh, not to harp on it too much before we run out of time. It's this is really, you can get a chance to practice your presentation, really understand what you're, what is missing, what, you know, listen to their feedback and, and buy it. They really take advantage. So, yeah, specifically, you'll meet one hour each during the week, so from November 13th to November 27th, and you need to coordinate it separately. Okay. We are really slow, <laughs> but uh, I guess it's okay. We'll catch up. Okay, I'm going to stop here before we go into this. So, are there any questions? I went through a lot of things, but okay. So the process is clear, grading is clear. That's uh, the most important thing so from your perspective, not mine. Okay. What size of group do you normally do? It depends on the size of the class, but generally there are three. Sometimes there will be four students per team. You mean the team, right? Yeah. Yeah. Usually three to four per team, but this is a little smaller than usual, so it might be two. Depends. Generally, we want to end up with uh, five to eight in that order. And again, if you prefer to work with someone, just let me know. You know I'm very flexible. I, again, this class, my goal, my goal is not to uh, give you bad grades. Or that this is really not my goal. My real goal is this is a journey that you experience, right? Uh, understand the optics, of course, which we all need to do, but really apply the thing to some solution, some innovation, something you create, you bring to the world and try to back it up, right? And go through that exercise. That's really my goal here, so just be aware of it. So, okay, good. So let's go through some examples first in the, in the remaining part of the class um, about a few simple technologies. Well, stuff is the simplest possible thing, but let me give you some motivation on why we should do this. First of all, why technologies for the developing world, as I said before. First of the, the key things to remember are that the, the solar resources in the developing world is made and huge, right? There's a much more sunlight in, in the center part of the, around the equator than far, far away from the equator. Right? And the, the nice thing is that, that, well, the bad thing, I suppose, is that there is little access to infrastructure. So a good example is cell phones, right? Cell phones basically piggyback landmines in majority of African regions. Right. This is an example of a technology that came in, which completely changed the quality of life. Right? The farmers could now call and find out the prices without having to rely on a middleman. Right? So they could get better prices for the crops. And this is all and, and uh, transferring money by the phone and so it's, it's an example. The infra not having no access to infrastructure was not an impediment to the new technology. I think solar is similar to that. Or at least some of these. Biomass resources are, of course, basket weaving. Biomass refers to wood and this layer, which is what most of the world uses for cooking. And they also contribute CO2, so something we want to address. Uh, of course, the impact is giant, right? One out of four people on the planet have no access to electricity, so if we can come up with cheaper, simpler ways of creating electricity, we can impact one out of every four people on the planet with the same thing. And that would be an incredible uh, feat. Uh, and at the end of the day, it has to be a market opportunity because you want to build sustainable technological solutions. You want to be able to make money. But someone needs to be able to make money so the whole thing is sustainable. So that's why that second half of the class is all about entrepreneurship and trying to understand the business case for it. But the, what's really important to really understand is that the, the business case is not completely divorced from the technical case. They are really intertwined, right? Because you might have a technical solution, it just doesn't work in human terms. So you need to innovate and make it work in human terms. But then you realize it's too expensive. So then you need to innovate and figure out how to make it cheaper. And that innovation could may, may, may not be a technical. It could be a, a, um, um, a use case scenario. A good example is Uber. Right? Uber is the largest taxi company in the world, but it doesn't own any cars. So as an example of how, how an, of an innovation, which has to do with the use case or the, the model of how you make revenue. So there are lots and lots of different ways to innovate. 
And I'm not going to constrain you in any way. You can think about it as widely as you want. Okay, so let's jump into the simplest possible, uh, I would think, the simplest possible technology, solar cooking. So we'll start by uh, looking at a simple example. Hopefully the video plays. Let's see. Maybe. <laughs> ah, you know what? I, I know why it doesn't play. I have to... This was an issue with the uh, just take me a second. There's an issue with the driver. Uh, what I want to do is I want to show you one of the state of the art solar cooking capabilities. Very simple, simple technology. Uh, in this class, we like simple things we can understand easily and hopefully it will improve with my personal So we'll take a look at this example, mm -hmm. and then we'll go into a little deeper into some of the physics of why certain choices were made. And then I'm going to ask you to think about how you would improve it. OK? Just a very mini exercise. Oh, I need to, oops, that's, that's the problem. OK, let's wait. to about there. Sorry, the, the music is playing in my ear. <laughs> it's not important. <laughs> so anyway, so this is an example from a company called Wilson. It's from Google, yeah. yeah. So they have a reflective panel here, a specific shape, and they put actually the yummy curve in the center, and it looks nice and boiled water. You can see this black thing in the center. It's flat because you want to get the heat and get some good food in there. Some light reflected onto the tube, there's a vacuum inside for the ventilation, right? Keep the heat good. And get it cooked. Very nice, right? Because it's so anyway, you get you get the idea. It's almost there. It's almost two seconds. The, this is uh, the portability is important in this example. I'm, I'm not advocating any product, but I'm just giving an example of a particular thing. Okay, so. Give that. Okay, so if you've got an example of, well, that's something you can buy. You can buy a manufacturer. Right? So let's look at some simple things. So this is a, a, a very, very simple thing. So this is, I, I actually built one of these with my eight year old daughter. Which it didn't look as nice as this, but you, know, you can do it. It's very simple. So basically, I have a piece of aluminum foil reflecting right in, and uh, the, the, the material that you're cooking is inside there, and of course, it, it goes in. So there's an inner box enclosed in clear plastic or, or, or glass. Very simple construction, the reflector. This insulation, so this insulation is quite important. You don't want to lose the heat. That's how thermal management things work. Uh, this is slow, even cooking because it's you know, fairly big, uniform. It's very safe. You never got to get too hot. Right. It's a solar box cooker. You can also have what's called a panel cooker, which looks more complicated because you're trying to direct light right from more angles a bigger aperture reflecting more of the sunlight right? so there you go in your box in this case reflective panels uh, it's pretty simple it's at least expensive you can buy some of the foldable panels things like that however something you may not think about some kids are in high risk so if you have anything like that if you don't have a way to hold it down so it's something you need to think about it doesn't retain heat that right? doesn't so, and clarity. so you want something that could also work uh, sometimes, it depends on the market. So again, when you innovate, you also have to think on the other side. Like what is the problem you're solving and who are you solving the problem for? 
right? You have to think very, very carefully. So one of the important things in this class is that you, I want you to think from the technically, but also think from a business point of view, who is going to use it? And let that drive the technology. Also, okay, it's very, very important. Uh, parabolic hookers, probably the most complicated. Uh, you might have seen some of these, takes parabolic dish. We'll talk more about why parab paraboloids are perfect for this. Comes from non-imaging optics, or non-geometrical optics, where you come from the yeah, very simple uh, geometrical principles we'll talk about later. Uh, uh, you put, a, put something in the focus of the parabola, it can get very high temperatures very quickly. Looks very quickly, it needs sun tracking. What that means is the sun moves, Sun tracking is something we'll talk a lot about in this class. That turns out to be a very big thing. The sun moves. How do you ensure that the focus remains on the, whatever you're looking at? That's not easy. So in this case, you have to mechanically do it. Uh, more complex, expensive, risk of fire, and great iron. So at this point, I want to take a minute or two. I'm going to turn on the light. And I want you to first introduce yourself to your neighbors. So you know. I want you to think carefully about, I showed you three different types of hookers, and uh, think <coughs> among yourself, see how would you improve it? Just very basic. Simplest possible solar technology, how would you improve it? Okay, you should talk, I don't want you to be quiet and think in your own head. So you can move over here. <laughs> this is important. They, Yeah, 
Very simple technology. You can definitely improve it. Thousand year old technology can be improved. Right? This is kind of my point. Okay. Anything you do can be improved with a little bit of cooperation, kind of crazy imagination. But I heard some really interesting ideas, some of which I think could be interesting projects by themselves. So we need to move on in the interest of time. But this is very important. I want you to uh, be able to brainstorm like this. And we'll do this again and again in the class. Uh, if I'm not here, of course, uh, up attend the PA. I forgot to introduce our introduction. Uh, it will, will lead it as well. So this uh, gives you saw a few different types of solar cookers. Let's look at uh, another example. Okay, This is a, a what's called a Fresnel lens cooker. A Fresnel lens cooker is interesting because Fresnel lens is a type of optical element, similar to something we will talk about during the, la the later part of the, uh, the next few lectures. Okay? So we'll talk about it. It's a little bit different than any of these concentrators we've seen, but this is not absolutely new because all of you who have a, a flat uh, TV have one of these Fresnel lenses inside it. So let's take a quick look at this video, which I sh I'm going to play. Like that, so it'll play the volume. When you can use it to make one of these, and then use that to, to do, do this, that. and cook food like this. Okay, so this is an example of a. Um, I was walking along the street one day, and I saw this abandoned rear projection TV. Uh, luckily, the bottom panel was missing, and looking up inside, I saw a nice mirror that looked like aluminum coated mylar perfect for a parabolic solar cooker. So I returned later with a screwdriver and a star-shaped head and opened it up. Inside I found to remove the mirror, but to my delight I also found this two foot by four foot Fresnel lens, which I could use for a Fresnel lens solar cooker. A week or so later and I built it. Okay, so here's the finished uh, Fresnel solar cooker, Fresnel lens solar cooker. This is my four foot by two foot lens. I got my sun finder right here for lining it up with the sun. And then right here is where I'm going to be cooking some stuff. So the first step is to find a uh, focal point. And for that, I've got it about right right now. I got this leaf right here. 
and they put their leaf right there. You can see it starts smoking, so that's about right, maybe a little bit high. Okay, step one is put on a little oil. Okay, so I just put on the meat. You can hear it sizzling there. Let me fast forward a little bit. Yeah, I think that's. You get the and don't step. forget to wear your safety goggles. Yes. <laughs> These are welded goggles you can get at hardware stores, places like that. Okay. So let's skip that. So let me. Okay. So you get an idea uh, of uh, whether, you know, the, the, one advantage of a Fresnel lens would be it's flat, right? as opposed to a parabolic where you need the volume. So maybe there are some situations that would be better for us, for example. So we'll talk a little bit about how Fresnel lenses work later on, but very high temperatures, so it's, it needs sun tracking, right? The whole thing has to move because the sun moves, the focus shifts. So it goes into the bone, as some of you pointed out. So, okay. So let's talk a little bit about some of the key principles involved here. Very simple, but let's try to understand. We start with simple stuff, okay? First of all, we know this is a greenhouse effect. We basically have something cooking inside an enclosure where we have visible light and infrared light, near infrared light in here. It depends on, so first of all, let's explain. This on top here is transparent. But when we say transparent, it is transparent to us, which means there's no sort of visible light. So though it might mean that it might not be transparent to infrared. Now heat is so energy, heat is energy. Energy can come from any Color, right? Can be visible into red, and that red very nice. And we'll talk more about that next uh, next week as well. Okay. So it has to be very important that you allow as much as of the light to pass through, but you also want to make sure that what's re-emitted from this object is trapped intact. And this is what's called a greenhouse effect. And what does that mean? We'll talk about that. So let's say visible light comes through. Okay, this is a black body. We'll talk about what a black body is, but for now let's just assume something that looks like energy. And that heats up. Now, when something heats up, it will, it's a black body is going to re radiate as well, re radiate light, something similar to your radiant heater if you're in the infrared. But it will radiate light at a different wavelength, much longer wavelength. So it absorbs light in the visible, let's say green, it will re radiate at infrared, invisible light. Now, these long wavelengths will not pass through the glass of light. They are trapped. That's the idea. That's the idea of this greenhouse. It's exactly what happens with clouds, right? Clouds on the planet, just like you know, it's a blank one. But, and the reason is because visible light can pass through, but longer wavelength light cannot pass through. So it's important what this material is. Okay. Fortunately, most of the transparent materials are not transparent to visible. Okay. The absorbed energy, of course, inside this uh, the container must be conducted to the food efficiently. So this black body has to be a good heat conductor, right? You don't want it to be insulated because you want the food inside needs to get the heat. Right? So you need to have a good choice on the top of material and good choice on the container material. Now heat gain. The orientation of the glass can have a, uh, this is the, uh, the box that we talked about, can have a big impact. So you have a box one, just like that, kind of like this. And then there's nothing, right? Just a little box, just like a transparent open. Or you have a little window here. So if you look at these two boxes, uh, or uh, sorry, a ray stack here, which box will receive more sunlight? Okay, so it's obvious the way to look at it, by the way, is not just by uh, randomly saying that you see there's more surface area or something, but look at this line right there. Right? That is the cross section of the sunlight that actually enters the, the device. 
that is bigger, right? So if you want longer. So that means you're actually intersecting more of the sum bar. There's a power that means units of watts per meter squared, but it's the times the area that gives you power density, sorry, times the area gives you the total power going into the system. And we'll do these, some of these analysis later. Uh, but which box will have more boxes? Any guesses? Uh, well, the insulation could be the same, right? Well, the top bit. Ah, yes, 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 you're right. So you can re-radiate more light uh, through that. So, of course, this class, the greenhouse effect is not perfect. Some, you can, of course, get re-radiated out, which is why any of those things, you know, even coming close to zero C is getting more right? thermal radiation coming out, right? So that's an example of where you have to think about this like a multi-objective optimization. You're optimizing to get more power in, but at the same time, you want to minimize any losses too, right? So you have to be aware of all the different things that can happen. It's a very simple example. Uh, we will have to stop soon, but let's just a couple more things. Uh, you can use reflectors. So in this case, you can have one panel, which increases the collection area, right? So you can have two panels. Here. So if you can see what's happening here is that you're collecting, if you don't have, uh, if you only have one of these, you see you collect all these rays. Let's imagine you're only looking at mil, the shut up. But if you add this, you're actually collecting more rays. So you're essentially increasing this input aperture. Right? You're basically increasing it by roughly 30%. So this input aperture will be the denominator of what we what when we compute efficiency. That's coming in. Numerator will be whatever we're trying to keep, right? So how much energy has gone into the of it or of its electricity, how much electricity has been created. That's how we will talk about efficiency. Output, which is electricity we are feeding or whatever, divided by the input. So it becomes very critical later on. This is very simple, but we'll see more complicated things later on. We've got to start somewhere. Uh, and since, since we are at the end of the class, my brainstorming here is how would you increase this speed? I would leave that as a homework. You can uh, think about it. In this particular situation, when we come up with a new and interesting way of increasing this uh, heat gain, it's called a heat gain because by adding just a panel, you're increasing the amount of power that goes into the system. Okay, so.